Good evening. I'd like to call the Oxford School Committee meeting to order, today being February 27th. Uh, let's see, this evening our uh, student rep is not here, and Mr. Anderson is not at the meeting. He is absent tonight. So we will start right in with our February 13th meeting minutes, please. Thank you. Good January 9th. Are there any corrections or comments on these meeting minutes? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Call for the vote. Abstain. Yes. Yes. Yes, three affirmative, one absent, one abstention. Thank you. We also have in our packets, uh, let's see, is this a quorum? Yes, we have a quorum now. Uh, January 9th, executive session minutes, please. Move to accept. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. Abstain. And I vote yes. Three affirmative, one abstention, one absent. These meeting minutes are also approved. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And as we know, it's still budget season, so we're going to go right into the budget discussion that we have this evening. I did ask uh, the superintendent and Mr. Matthew to please add into our budget the per pupil expenditures. I know that it's late, uh, and I know the information just came in just to you now, and, and, and that's my fault. I, forgive me for that. It's just something I, I think we need to take a look at, knowing that this budget we are trying with all diligence uh, to keep at a number we can operate with and restore, hopefully, uh, some of the positions to get our district back up into a progressive manner. So here we go, Mr. Superintendent, if you would, or Mr. Matthew, whoever would like to take the hand here and uh, tell us how our budget's looking right now. Thank you, Mrs. Ennis. Um, as you note uh, in the packet, uh, Mr. Matthew gave us the updated uh, revenue projections from the town. Uh, the town has worked um, on the health insurance numbers, and so the new number um, is $14,899,948. Is and uh, obviously there's still a lot of uh, mileage uh, to take place in Boston. But um, based upon uh, where the town stands, we look for that number to hold um, for now um, and wait and see what the House and Senate do with the governor's budget. Um, obviously, we have made some severe cuts, as we've outlined, over the past couple of years, um, both in terms of of uh, teachers as well as programs. Uh, we are realistic in that we don't expect to be able to get them all back in FY13. However, um, given uh, all of the, the factors that we are facing with uh, four contracts open for negotiations, with the um, mandates that have been placed upon us by virtue of being a level three district. Um, the fact that we have to uh, negotiate the educator evaluation standards, there is an awful lot of things in play and um, a budget of 14,899 uh, certainly is not an ideal budget, but it is certainly a realistic one uh, given where we stand with the town. and. Um, I'd like if Mr. Matthew has any uh, comments to, to add him at this time. Um, well, the, the primary change here was uh, the initial budget was put together with estimated health insurance increases. After meeting with our health insurance advisor, um, the numbers before you are more realistic in terms of what we can expect, at least for a high watermark for health insurance increases for next year. And unfortunately, with, the in, with um, those actual numbers or actual estimates, uh, now we, we did lose about $60,000 uh, in the overall scheme of things, shifted away from the operating budget to health insurance to cover those costs. 
Um, you know, I, I think this is probably the last of the changes from the town, um, at least in terms of going, our budget going down and, and costs going up. If anything, as the numbers are finalized, I would hope that they that the health insurance costs actually come down a little bit more mm -hmm. and more money flows into our operating budget. Okay. But that's still do, do be, to be determined. Of sure, course. sure. It's still, as we know, work in progress. And, and I know the committee just received the per pupil expenditures, um, and it is indicated in the memo here, but I, I, I do want to make it clear. These numbers are from the state. Uh, they're available on the state um, DESE website. Uh, and the per pupil expenditures as computed by the state for everybody, not just Oxford, obviously, include all of those town expenses on behalf of the school, such as health insurance in our case and uh, facilities and maintenance in our case, and all of those costs that are detailed on, in those budget pages, as well as all money from grants revolving funds. So it, it's the most comprehensive look at a at an individual town or comparison between towns. However, there are some variables inside of there, besides obviously the amount of funding, but even the town support of the schools, uh, the town expenses on, on behalf of the schools, such as health insurance. Those agreements vary from town to town, from community to community. So while this is as good as it gets, there are some caveats that you need to be aware of um, when looking at these numbers. Okay. Anything from the committee? Nothing? Okay, we'll move along on the budget. Uh, actually, the other, another portion of the of business is the race to the top. The superintendent is going to give us a report on the funds for race to the top. Thank you, Mrs. Ennis. Um, as everyone may remember, uh, race to the top was born out of the uh, ARA um, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. And part of that monies, um, that $787 billion, was um, a small line called Race to the Top funding. And that was uh, about $5.1 billion that states could compete uh, to be allocated uh, for. And in lieu of reauthorizing um, No Child Left Behind, uh, that that was a, a pretty neat scheme by uh, the Department of Education to get some real change in, in how we do business in the world of public education. And from that race to the top, um, the state on its second try received $250 million. Uh, and out of that, half of that went directly to the state through DESE to be used on programs and to improve the bottom line of our students' performance. And the other half, about $125 million, went directly to local school districts. Um, districts could not um, pursue it if they chose not to. Uh, some districts did not uh, want to become a race to the top district. Um, in, in most districts where funding is tight, it was worth the hoops to jump through to, um, to receive this funding. Uh, Oxford Public Schools uh, will receive in total about $230,000 of Race to the Top funding spread over um, four years with the, with the majority of it coming in the last two years, FY13, um, FY14. And um, there, What's that figure again? The, the Oxford uh, race to the top share is about two hundred and thirty thousand um, dollars. FY eleven, FY twelve, FY thirteen, and fourteen. The majority of the money is allocated in thirteen and fourteen. Um, there was over thirty projects to choose from. Obviously, they had to be vetted and approved by DESE, and um, we have chosen um, obviously to increase our teacher effectiveness, our teacher capacity. Uh, to work with um, updating our curriculum and matching to frameworks, as well as utilizing technology through uh, the data warehouse and um, the uh, CIF, the interoperability framework for our technology. Um, some of the projects we were not eligible for, thank goodness, 
uh, such as level four and level five. Um, and as I said, there's a, a lot of, of um, hoops to jump through to receive this money, to, to allocate the spend, and to show the accountability. Um, certainly the auditors have already been um, here once uh, as part of the new state auditor's mission to, to uh, have accountability throughout public education. And um, this race to the top, uh, no matter how you look at it, is a good thing. And I know there are, there, there are political uh, wins that say it's not um, worth it, um, but I feel strongly that uh, the money is a part of it as well as the initiatives that um, we will undertake through this grant funding. Um, along with the race to the top, we have, um, we have been designated as a level three district, and that is purely because we do not meet adequate yearly progress. That does not mean that we are um, singled out because most districts in the Commonwealth and, and most districts across the country are not making AYP. And um, so we are um, receiving level three assistance through DESE, through the uh, District and School Initiative Center, which is money that is, at the, which is services that are no cost to us but is funded partly through the other half of that federal race to the top money that went to DESC. Tied into all of this is the educator evaluation standards, which were also a big part of race to the top. And this was the political ripple that was caused by um, teachers unions feeling that they were being dismantled um, at the expense of this initiative. Um, and that is certainly not the case in most of the Commonwealth and certainly not the case here. We are working as partners. I think the committee has, has made that clear um, in our negotiations with all of our units, especially with our teachers, that we have to work together to improve our, um, our test scores and in turn improve our students' outcomes so that they have the ability to be successful when they leave us. And um, not to digress, but as a side note, we all know um, the job market and what is out there. And if you talk to any, anyone in that 17 to 25, 28 demographic, um, they know all too well how difficult it is to find a job that can support them and how to match up their training and their education to be able to have them prepared um, to take their place in society. And I think that, you know, there's, there's no shortage of statistics that show uh, many of the, of the current jobs um, were not around even 15 years ago. And um, some of the job categories, most of us older folks have a tough time deciphering. And it is up to us to make sure that our students um, are prepared um, to meet the challenges of, of a very changing, rapidly changing job market. And so uh, it is our goal that through uh, the use of the Race to the Top funding, as well as our, our Level 3 assistance, as well as adopting our educator evaluation standards, which we must do by the uh, fall, and um, we are in the process of setting that up, and along with negotiating with all of our units, um, to make sure that everybody is on board with what our mission is, um, is really uh, an intersection of what is our mission, and that is to improve education for all of our kids so that they all have an opportunity to be successful when they leave us. Um, and so I'd be happy to entertain any questions um, that you do have. Um, we are in the, the process of um, through teacher negotiations, creating more planning time so that we can work on all of these um, initiatives um, so that we can improve. And I think that um, I, I will look forward to reporting um, over the next, um, or certainly the balance of this year, um, what we are doing um, to adopt these initiatives to, to make us um, uh, a better district 
for all of our kids. And that's, that's really our bottom line. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Okay, moving on. We will now uh, have a report from the wellness, wellness Committee. Ms. Hokinson can come on up. Thank you very much for coming in. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You could tell us how things are going. Could you also tell us tonight who's on the committee with you? Yes. Things are going well. Um, let me tell you who's on the committee first. We have Rhonda Donnie, who's a parent, um, Katie, Kaylee Van Gill, and Brianna DiPlato, who are um, college students that will be leaving us soon. Uh, Mr. Hilmenberger, Katie Sheehan, Sandy Rivett, Linda Forty, and Mark Peterson. Good, Good group. Okay. We, we are looking for new members because we're going to be losing some. Okay. Um, the update is we have our schedule for the taste testings that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a fruit and vegetable tasting with the preschool and the kindergarten students. And the middle school will be having one. And that goes, Mrs. Goulas puts that together. She's been doing that for about six years. And that one is going to be on March 9th. Um, the March 14th, we're going to have the Clara Barton preschoolers. And there will be two separate groups on that one. Uh, March 20th will be more preschoolers with 13 kids, and the 21st is going to be all the kindergartners at Chafee School. Okay. And we're going to have a put a little educational thing before and read a story. I know Mr. Yvonne is very into it, and he's excited to read the kids. Um, something about a 300-pound pig or something. <laughs> so that's we're looking forward to that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Um, our next meeting, we were going to, I was going to come back and let you know how that went, but we have to get more members on for next year because we're going to have all the new regulations coming up, and we would like to get somebody from the PTOs from each school to be able to help us with that because we're going to need somebody in each school to watch what's going on, if you will. Have you talked to any of the principals and... Um, not, I haven't gone that far yet. Okay. Um, I'm going to work, uh, that's something I'm working on. Okay, if I could suggest maybe if you could attend a PTO meeting, you might be able to rally a couple okay. parents, you know, if you get that schedule. Yeah, it's hard to get people, I know people are busy, Very but difficult, yeah. We've got to get more people on. Um, and that's it. Um, if I can throw a little plug out there. Please, um, yeah. The new milk regulation that's coming, the you know flavored milk. Um, we'd like to get some parents' input on it, and we can get it through, shoot me an email, or maybe through Mr. Peterson, and we can get something down to the state house, to the state reps, and try and get it changed over. Okay. Or if they put it on hold so they can relook at it again. Okay. Um, flavored milk is a big choice over white milk. And from a parent point of view, I would rather see my child getting calcium and vitamin D through chocolate milk, they're not having it at all. Mm. So mm. we'll see what we can do. I think probably Mr. Himmelberger can help you with that if we can get that posted on the web. Uh, even if, even maybe a flyer going home uh, from the committee itself if you want to put something together okay. and, and we can send something home if that helps. Go ahead. If I may. Um, even though I might seem like the logical choice here, it might be better off to come either through the Wellness Committee or the PTOs only because we receive federal funding. Okay. And I wouldn't want to step on anyone's toes. Sure. Especially in Washington. Um, so. Or you'll be in for an audit. Well, <laughs> we're leading the league in audits. But I think um, certainly... Um, what Pat has explained is really, I mm. think, part of um, what doesn't seem to be a fully thought out policy and, okay. and, um, on, the, on the part of the federal government. Because as she had said, um, we sell a lot of flavored milk and um, yeah. there are a lot of our students that just don't like plain white milk. Sure. And so um, I think it would be a great grassroots movement for the PTOs, certainly. Um, 
and invite all um, concerned parents to um, to get in touch with uh, the wellness committee to to see what the proper outlet would be to um, to communicate that to both Boston and and Washington. Okay. If Thank maybe you. with your interns, with your students, um, maybe put together some kind of a notice, and and you know just it just needs to be approved by the superintendent, and then it can go <coughs> out. Uh, and and of course the website and the uh, cable channel yep, you have access to. Uh, that that you know market it the best way you can, and just get that splash out there that you know you're looking for information, and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it'll snowball, and we'll have a lot of people behind us. If you can, you know what, if, if seriously, if you can get 10 to 15, I think you'd be ahead of it. So, you know, just do the best you can. With something like that, it's very difficult. We all know it's very difficult to get involvement, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But try your best. Got to try that's, and that's do it. what we can do. Try your best. Mr. Peterson. Um, she's mentioned the PTOs, but we also discussed, and we're gonna, we did have a coach on at one time, which was the AD director, but we need... We need somebody from the coaching staff, uh, also from the booster club, because a lot of these new regulations are going to affect not only us in-house, but how we sell or project exterior for uh. games, uh, for <laughs> fundraisers, everything else. So uh, Pat has already uh, taken an initiative, and uh, the committee has already sent me letters. Great. Um, my, my email can be used also. I don't know, whatever you draft, you can give the superintendent, get it on the uh, TV and my email as well as yours, and we'll compile them in one. Di if they want to send them directly to Washington or to the State House, that's fine. If not, uh, a lot of people don't feel comfortable doing that, send them to us. We'll deal with the, the, the uh, uh, state and federal level reps and senators that we need to at the time we need to. Um, we have an opportunity March 27th. We have the Day on the Hill coming up. So I'd really like to get some stuff in as, as quickly as possible. We have some great letters right here from Pat tonight that she gave to me. Um, but the more the better. Absolutely. And like you said, 1015, but I think we can do better than that because a lot of these regulations that people don't understand and have seen in the newspaper probably just are passing off are going to affect football games, basketball games, our booster club, our fundraising projects as what they can sell also on our premises. Okay. All right. It's good to know that. So I, I would put that plea out there to, uh, to anybody listening tonight, as well as Pat has asked for PTO, I'll try to attend them with her or whatever. Um, and I'll talk to the AD and see if we can get a coach or somebody else involved again, and even a teacher. Uh, we have some now, but uh, uh, we really need the PTOs and the booster club, basically, because they're the ones that do the outside fundraising and extra fundraising and have parties and things here internally. Right for birthdays and things of that nature also. One of the things you may be able to do is invite them in, you know, give them a phone call. I think all of their names and numbers are listed. Uh, I know on the high school website the boosters are, and the PTOs, they're on the other schools. Call whoever the chair is and, and explain to them what you're doing. I know that I've, anytime I've had to call for information or anything like that, they're very good and they will, they'll help you as best they can, so. Okay. And they can bring it to their membership, you know. So sometimes you have to be the one to reach out and invite them in, and then they Absolutely. they do respond. They do respond and take an interest. So that's good. We appreciate that, Mr. Peterson. Just uh, just a final comment. I want to thank everybody because they've worked hard uh, all the way back to Angie from the inception of this to get our wellness statement prepared. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ms. Hulkinson has done a great job uh, working with it over the year to to tweak it and add additional things that we're working on, which you'll get further. Uh, um, comments on probably at one of the next meetings as she gets things more in line again sure. right? but she's, she's done a great job and I'd like to thank her and the committee for their efforts thank you and we thank you also very much for, we know it's hard it's hard to have a subcommittee that has to report to the, to the school committee but thank you very much for all of your efforts thank we you. appreciate it Moving on down the agenda, Mr. Matthew has our bid review for the transportation of our students. Thank you. Um, on February 17th, uh, we did open the bids that were received for our transportation contract to cover fiscal years 13, 14, and 15. The, uh, there were two um, official bids received, one from first student, the previous um, 
provider of transportation to the district and um, Durham School Services, the current uh, provider of transportation. The lowest bid does represent a 12% increase from, last, from the current year to next year in terms of price increase. Based on that, the percentage increase, um, it's both the superintendent's recommendation and mine to the committee that it reject this round of bids and put it back out on the streets. We think that by tweaking some language in there, we might be able to achieve a level of reductions um, to this increase that will help better uh, meet our budget. That's a lot, 12%. That's, um, I don't think we expected that, but as far as that, your recommendation of the superintendent and yourself goes, uh, absolutely. Um, I hate to have to look at doing something else with transportation in this community, that's for sure. Mr. Peterson. Yeah, the 12%, I can understand what you're saying, and it's a, I'm surprised that it's them that's the lowest bid. Um, but the language con is my concern, <clears throat> and, and you alluded to one issue here, but tweaking of the language, um, before it goes back out to bid, could we see those, or could we... Could I see those or something with you at the same time? Sure, absolutely. Um, is it is it solely computer that you're you're really concerned about the expense of the computer situation, or is there additional language in the busing? Um, I, I think I think what we what we need to do based on these you know potential increases is really go through our requirements to make sure that we're trying to, that we're putting a competitive bid package out there for the transportation vendors, and, and I know that. Um, the superintendent, when he was in my role previously, you know, did, was successful in putting it out back out to bid, in you know modifying the previous requirements. And I think it's always going to be a work in progress or a living mm -hmm. document, you know, that needs to to change, you know, m minor things here and there. But you know, as the world changes or as the world turns, so should the the re requirements. And I think that you know. On, we were surprised at the rate of increase as well um, for the next year and. Um, you know, think that we might be able to mitigate that a bit. Okay. Uh, if I could just ask a quick question. Um, in regard to the use of the, um, the computer routing and all of that that we had done with our current transportation provider, I don't think, and this is just me, you know, knowing the town and how many students we pick up, I don't really think that we need a computer program to route our pickups and drop-offs sincerely I, I mean we're not adding roads and things like that we're not doing those kind of things we have some of the best bus drivers we have a few that are so so well seasoned that know the ins and outs of the pickups and drop-offs that they can really just do it it's, it's like a natural occurrence for them so in saying that I am not a fan of using this computer routing program again after the fiasco that we had with our current transportation provider so uh, in saying that that might be one of the things if that is part of the cost that maybe is driving up some of this well I don't know how you would word it because it's your bid document it's not for us to step on, but I wouldn't even entertain it. I would hope that whoever the transportation provider is takes advantage of our seasoned drivers and understands their role in this community. Some of these people have been driving, what, Shirley's, what, 30-something years. You know, we're talking millions of miles they've driven. And multiple generations. Absolutely. So in saying that, if that's part of the, uh, uh, the cost increases, those, that computer program, don't get me wrong, sometimes this kind of software can be good for, for other things or uh, different, um, in, in a different role here. But as far as rooting out, you know, st stepping out and, and routing down all of our drop-offs and pickups and everything to start school, 
it's unnecessary in this community as far as I'm concerned, okay? So um, that's something I hope, I hope maybe, you know, you can, you can look into, but I understand the reason to increase and, I mean, sorry, not increase, to put it back out to rebid, you know, that's, I mean, we have to, <laughs> and, <laughs> we have to. So. And I, I do want to be clear with the committee. There's no guarantee that even by changing all of the language and all of the requirements that we will absolutely get a lower price. Mm -hmm. But it's a reasonable expectation, I think. Okay. Mr. Peterson. Well, we did this last time it went out to rebid when we changed companies even three years ago. <clears throat> when does this contract expire? June? Yes, the end of this. Uh, you've, you've said that it's 12% increase for the daily rate from just FY12 to FY13. Is that per year? Did you no, put out a three-year bid again? It's a three-year bid, yes. But all I did, all I did, all you, all you compared to was this first year of twelve percent. So what were the next two years in swing? Were they higher, twelve percent across the board, nine percent the second year? It, there was approximately a nine to ten dollar increase on the daily rate per year for year two and year three. And what is the daily rate right now? Uh, I don't have the current daily rate. The low bid here was. 327 95 327 yep. for the year for the year per yes. year uh, I'm all for putting it out for rebid uh, we did it last time it worked out to our benefit my only concern is again in the language that something like the late late buses and dropped or something of that nature that it's still because we did that one year we dropped the late buses and then had to bring them back because uh, it cost us more to bring them back mm -hmm. so um, that's my only concern a caution of that nature as you do this uh, mrs. Anna said it is your bid but it it's your your, your language but it is actually our bid so it, it does concern me so it, again I'd like to uh, I'm more than happy to work with no, I understand either it. yourself yeah. or the transportation subcommittee which I think Mark but it does seem like a high increase even it's, it's all based on speculation again with insurance and, and gas and everything else, but uh, uh, we've, somebody has to stop these speculation somewhere. Thank you. Do you need a vote of the committee? Uh, yes, the committee okay. does need to. I would move to uh, follow uh, the business manager's lead at this point in time and put it up for rebid. Second. Thank you. Call for the vote. Uh, any comment? Question? Thank you. I'll call for the vote, please. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes four affirmative, one absent. One absent for um, reopening the bid process. Thank you. Okay, next down the list on the agenda here, just as a reminder as part of the correspondence that there is a meeting in Dudley uh, March 1st at uh, 6 o'clock with State Rep Durant. I think I've passed everything off to everyone. This is strictly a Chapter 70 roundtable meeting, and you probably may have gotten a reminder in your email today if you didn't get to uh, RSVP. So I know that I will be going. I don't know who else is going, but I will definitely be there, God willing. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, we're going to get a report from Mrs. Ravelli. She has started a curriculum advisory committee, and she's going to tell us how things are going. How things are going? Um, not yet. We've set a tentative date <laughs> for first meeting. Um, which is March, let me look, I believe the 14th, I believe so, she caught me off guard again, yes, March 14th, okay, at 345, it's a tentative meeting, um, what at time? this point we're just, and the only reason why it's tentative is that I need to speak to Mr. Wells, um, okay. or, or Ms. Hackinson regarding a space, um, deciding on where, Ms. Hackett, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, regarding space. Um, other than that, it looks good. I think I had 14 people at last count. Um, Can you tell us who you have? Uh, teachers, sure. I have a, a Susan Pelletier, a Casey Bush, Lois Doré, Karen Ruiz, Miriam King, Susan Gallant, Elaine Goulis, Courtney Nugent, Joe mm, Generico, yeah. uh, Dendra Baudre, Boudreau. Boudreau. Boudreau, is that it? Boudreau? Yeah. Sorry, Dendra. Um, and Mr. Um, Mr. Yvonne, 
and who says he's bringing two, he'll be bringing two more, he said, from his school. Great, that's good, um, that's a great group. So that's quite a group, and I also have two parents um, that are interested, and I'm trying to get That's there. great, that's well, the group of teachers and Mr. Yvonne, that's a very good group there. So the only thing that I'm missing is, again, to, to speak to uh, Mr. Wells regarding uh, possibly a few students. Okay. I think that was mentioned, yep. uh, and, uh, and, and a space. Okay. And we're all set to go. Mm. Excellent. Very good. Well, we look forward to hearing how things are going and, and your report that you'll submit to the uh, superintendent and to the committee your recommendations. Thank you very much. Now from uh, Stu Superintendent of Schools, if you have anything further, Mr. Himmelberger. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have two um, points I wanted to make sure I got out, and one was to our students and one was to our parents. And uh, to the parents, I wanted to urge everyone to please uh, become familiar with the budget process and um, feel free to stop by again to uh, the central office on the top floor of the community center if you want to look through the budget book. I think it is important uh, that as many taxpayers and voters as possible are, are um, up to speed on what we are asking for. And again, uh, if you can also attend town meeting uh, the first Wednesday in May, it's your town. And I think um, school budgets um, need to be supported by a wide variety of folks. So that is my um, message for the parents. Uh, to the students, I want everyone to know that we are uh, rapidly turning the corner to the second half of the year and third quarter. And for those students that are doing well, um, continue to be curious and explore your studies with vigor. Uh, to students who are maybe not as happy as where they are currently, there is still time to save the year and to improve upon your four-year record. and your future as you move through the Oxford Public Schools. So I know everyone had a wonderful snowless vacation week last week, and it, it, it's a, a, a stretch now that we're in as we get into um, the long um, March through March, and it is a great time for everybody to really take stock of where they are and, and make sure that they have their plans in place to do as well as they can, and I would urge every student to work with their teachers and to um, make sure that they involve their folks to do the best they can. I think it is, um, a, there's an awful lot of opportunity. It's out there. Just ask for it and just take advantage of it. And that is all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. From our business manager, Mr. Matthew. Uh, nothing else this evening. Okay, thank you very much. School committee members, I'll start with Mr. Peterson. Um, somewhere I had seen originally, but I, I see that the agenda was changed apparently, but the budget hearing, uh, what is the official date for that? Have you said? We're going to have the budget hearing, uh, public hearing will be March 26th. The reason it was changed is we couldn't get it in, the TNG wouldn't take the um, posting. Mm. So we're going to have it for March 26th. I just wanted to confirm a date. Yeah. And that will be the only item on the agenda that evening unless we have other business, just so everyone knows. I uh, had asked uh, the superintendent, the business manager, and Mr. Wells prior to our other meeting, Madam Chair, the, well, I guess I won't call it that, the granite gravestone, I call it, out front that was donated by one of the classes has okay. been knocked over again. And I was curious. I just want the public to know because I had been asked uh, especially in a year of no snow if the plow knocked it over or what, but because of the vandalism and the way it has to be fixed this time with re-rod put in it instead of just putting it back on its foundation, um, they're, they're seeking out someone to do it. So that's the reason it's still lying on the ground, all right? Okay. Uh, I believe that that's, if I'm uh, stating that right, uh, yep. Mr. Superintendent, I just, the only reason I bring it up now is I got my answer, but I want the public to know why it's uh, there and why they question me. Um, I alluded to earlier the day on the hill. Uh, there's some opportunity again. Um, you've all been notified or gotten yours probably in the mail, but I, I will be attending. So if there's anything anyone wants to 
have discussed or gotten to me prior to that date, please do so. Um, I forgot about this a couple times ago, but we're getting into a, a more daylight season, so it's probably not going to matter as much. But we do have some exterior lights, Mr. Business Manager. I would like all schools to take a tour, if it's the principal or the head custodian or whatever, or both together, um, dusk, night, whatever, or early, early morning when they get there, if it's still dark, to go through all of their exterior lights. Uh, every single building, and I didn't write them down, I didn't bring it to you, but I will if need be, but every single building has exterior lights that are not functioning. So I would like that uh, taken care of, please. That's all I have for tonight, ma'am. Thank you very much. Mrs. Ravelli. Um, the only thing that I have is uh, w with the Curriculum Advisory Committee, um, it would be really nice to have more parents. Okay. So just a plea for parents to uh, come on out and uh, see what's going on in the schools and get to know what's going on and um, help, help these wonderful teachers that have come forward mm -hmm. um, to give some advice uh, to where we go from here. Very good. Thank you very much. Mrs. Conan? I have nothing. You have nothing this evening, okay. And I have nothing right now either. So that is it for our meeting. We will have a call for executive session uh, under Chapter 30, Section 21, Subsections 2 and 3, both strategy sessions for preparations and negotiations of non-union personnel and also to discuss collective bargaining, bargaining or litigation uh, for union personnel. I would like a motion, please, to go into executive session. Question first, I, uh, or statement, please, that we will not be returning for any votes. This will be adjournment from the executive session, or what, what your intention, ma'am? See. Or if you're coming back to adjourn, it's one thing, leaving it open for... No, I think that we're just going to adjourn. Yeah, we won't have any votes. So moved, then. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mrs. Ravelli. Yes. Mrs. Coonan. Yes. And I vote yes. We are now in executive session. Thank you very much for coming in this evening. We appreciate it.